The year is 2011, and two color commanders are taking Storm. More than one color is not a new strategy to magic, but I'm hesitant. Nay, I'm afraid. I am white. I see Gorda. On the opposite side of the table, I see Orzov, black and white, a navigator of sacrifice and chaos. I want to win. I suppose I'm fighting to survive, so that I may face more battles and share the epic tales of glorious victory through life gain, tokens, and evasive angels in hopes that when others adapt my playstyle, they too will be rewarded. But right in that moment, something catches my eye. Green, red, and blue. Three more colors enter my world, posing their own strategies of strength, power, and control. I am wary, cautious, and perhaps afraid. I believe they feel the same. Do these colors wish to create harmony or to take over the very foundation of who I am? If I refuse, will that be my downfall? Or will my faith in my own strength be enough? And if I do refuse, who will I be to the rest? Will they see me as less than for not adapting? Or will I still be a viable strategy to success regardless? I sense the reason I fear the unknown is because of my amygdala, an almond-shaped section of our brain that integrates emotions, emotional behavior, and motivation. It interprets fear, helps distinguish friends from foes, and identifies social reward and how to obtain them. This is the first time I'm playing against a two-color deck. Because of my lack of experience in understanding it, I must simply be having a normal neurological response but my opponent seems displeased with my initial response. I like the white cards he's playing, but I don't think I'd like to splash black into my mono white deck. However, expressing that seems to have done more harm than good. Maybe I think that way because of something I call the cross manner effect, but based on psychological study, it refers to the tendency for individuals to more easily recognize abilities of their own mana group compared to those of other colors. This phenomenon is thought to result from a perceptual expertise rather than inherent bias and may influence how unfamiliar abilities and win cons are assessed in terms of threat. Or perhaps it was my evolutionary threat management approach to prejudice. The idea posits that community prejudice may stem from adaptive mechanisms designed to manage the long-term strength of a deck relevant to the prior meta threats. Such mechanisms could lead to heightened vigilance towards unfamiliar strategies, not out of animosity, but as a precautionary survival strategy. Each colour in magic is more than a style, it's a way of surviving. Blue calculates, red reacts, green adapts. These instincts are not moral, they're mechanical. They exist to preserve, not to persecute. Just as I was assessing the board, the colour combination did something Remarkable. It won the game. I had to face reality. Is it possible for integrated colors to have viable decks? If I fear the unknown and hold a strong bias due to expertise, then it makes sense that I'd become wiser by playing against this or similar decks more. Perhaps I should even consider adding those colors to my deck. But what are the benefits? Utilizing a range of color combinations offer a diverse range of interaction on the board. Each color has its own version of playing aggressive, establishing control, or assessing the circumstances with tempo play. But there are also negatives. If I accept more colors, I'd have to work harder to find the right manner, spending more time and resources to have the color pair work in unity rather than going for the old trusty reliable spells that I know. I look back at the board state, the one I lost. I'm seeking answers to my defeat. Lo and behold, I recognize this playstyle. Since my opponent's deck plays into white, I can see some familiar tricks in the likes of not just their white or black cards, but in their white and black cards. Studies have shown that the combination of diverse groups play a unique role in bridging the monocolored deck players, as their appearance can subconsciously signal unity and positive intergroup relations. 
if I add more colours to my deck, better yet, understand what these colours' strengths and weaknesses are, then perhaps bridging them together, though no easy feat, may just create something akin to unity between my cards and perhaps players. A balance between the symbols. Thus, for us to coexist, we must all bow to Tiamat. 